Hello, vinyl community. Cheers. I have my uh, homebrew coffee here in a, a paper uh, coffee cup. Had some birds on it. I think I got this at the 99 cent store. Anyway, cheers. I'm one of those people that um, I can I can drink coffee at night and go right to sleep. <laughs> um, yeah, maybe it's all the energy drinks I I, I drink at work. Um, coffee doesn't seem as strong to me now, so. Um, yeah, I can. I can also uh, drink coffee midday and take a nap. <laughs> anyway, it's a good day. Or rather, it's been a good day. A very good day, actually. Um, <clears throat> first of all, it was my day off, so <laughs> you know that's a good thing right there. Then, um, uh, late last week. I, I made a couple connections on um, Craigslist, and let me tell you, today is a big day because I didn't just make my first Craigslist purchase, I made my second Craigslist purchase. <laughs> um, the first, the, actually the second one, which I actually just got back from, um, someone had a three-shelf three vertical um, uh, set of record shelves, um, because <laughs> I, I'm sure many of you have, on on Facebook anyway, have seen um, my my six shelf unit, um, which I'm very very happy with. It's not intended for records, although they they fit perfectly in it, but. There's there are some weight issues on the on the upper shelves. Fortunately, that one's horizontal, but on the upper shelves, um, I, I I can't fill it out. So they're like maybe three. Each section is like three quarters full. So um, so needless to say, I have some overflow, and uh, I basically have them in in a series of woven baskets on the. <laughs> on the the floor and kind of makes our, our sitting room uh, look a little junky or messy or um, so I'd like to clean that up for the wife so I did get this this three shelf vertical um, unit and I'm very excited about it um, I, I think all the ones that are in the baskets are gonna be able to fit on it so I'm very pleased with that and it was only 25 bucks and it it looks it looks pretty well made and it, it and it smells nice <laughs> I I'm not sure what kind of I want to say it's cedar because because of the smell because I don't think most woods have a strong smell like that so it, it I'm guessing it's cedar um, <clears throat> yeah they, they said what company it was um, I want to say it was something like Rasputin or something like that. I don't know if anybody's heard of them, but anyway, um, yeah. So I'm very excited about that. Uh, I may show it in once I get my little corner uh, straightened out. I may, um, um, you know, kind of show all the shelves and show all my equipment and stuff and my little chair in the corner. <laughs> I've, I've shown pictures, but it'll be nice to do a little video. So um, now that my little corner of the sitting room is is near completion. Anyway, <clears throat> all right. So I was very excited about that. Now I do have to say, <laughs> I, I need to remember to erase the message. Actually, this it, it, since this was my second uh, purchase through Craigslist, and I arrived to the to where it was. It was a set of apartments. <clears throat> And let's just say, you know, the, the apartments were slightly questionable. Slightly. Um, more so their location than the apartments themselves. Um, <clears throat> so I had, I had, you know, concerns going into it. So I figured I would do, you know, the safe thing and, and um, 
I, I called their house and and left a message of where I was because I, I didn't I didn't tell my wife I was going, so um, <clears throat> so I called and left a message with the address and the apartment number and, and said, oh, I'm picking up these shells from Craigslist, so oh, I, I can delete that message now. You know, you can never be too safe these days, so I recommend you do something similar if not, you know, partner with someone and, and go in, in twos, but anyway. Um, <clears throat> All right. Then the first one. Um, <clears throat> for for weeks now, this guy has been listing um, listing records for sale on Craigslist. Um, the picture basically just shows a bunch of boxes with with records in them, and he said he has everything from classical to classic rock. So um, actually when I got there it actually went a little beyond that but a lot of it was classical and there was a lot of holiday stuff and you know the usual goodwill fare and he was asking a dollar each um, so I, I went through them there had to be like I don't know I'm, I'm bad at, at you know saying oh it's this many records I want to say like maybe three or four hundred Probably closer to 300 uh, records. So um, I I flipped through them and and I did manage to find I found quite a few and uh, sadly a couple I had to pass up on were the Beatles Abbey Road it had some some pretty bad scratches on it and plus that one it wasn't gonna go for a dollar either. <laughs> he said that particular box you know they were more and then. I don't know, there were a couple others, but that one I was... Oh, I, I had to pass on a uh, Thompson Twins. Ah, I love the Thompson Twins. Anyway, but I found a lot of good stuff. So, I ended up with 26 records, and I paid 20 bucks for them. And <clears throat> the first one is what we're listening to. The Commodores, it's their self-titled 1977 album, and uh, I, I don't, I'm not quite sure, he put little post-its on some of these, I'm not quite sure what those mean, but um, anyway, uh, yeah, this is what we're listening to. I mean, come on. Yeah, does anybody else like the Commodores? I like the Commodores. Come on. <laughs> um, yeah. And it's funny because uh, right here, I don't know if you can see that, it says autographed poster included. And needless to say, the autographed poster is not there. Um, it almost makes me think they purchased the album just for the autographed poster. <laughs> Maybe not, but anyway. That's the first one. That's what we're listening to. Now this one, um, I have a little collection going actually of these uh, Phase 4 um, stereo concert series. Um, this particular one is Richard Strauss um, doing Don Juan and Till Eulenspiegel's Merry Pranks. And it's conducted by Henry Lewis with the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra. Picture there. Oh, okay. I see what it is. <laughs> it's it's the it's a, a hand and then the 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 hilt of the sword. I think that's what you call it. Anyway, <laughs> it's kind of funny. It doesn't really it doesn't really fit the. <laughs> They're just being silly there, I guess. Anyway, I obviously I love classical music, and in that same vein. Who does not love Luciano Pavarotti? And this is popular Italian songs arranged and conducted by Henry Mancini. Oh, that's that's great. I love Pavarotti and I love Henry Mancini. So two and one, Mamma Mia, that's good. <laughs> All right, now this one, this was just kind of a blind purchase. I just kind of liked 
the album cover. I have no clue. I've never heard of this guy, and I'm probably going to be uh, feel really stupid when someone says, oh, he was in this band, and this is his solo album. <laughs> but Alex Call, um, it looks like it's self-titled from 1983, Alex Call. So I'll be interested to hear that. And um, a lot of the, the sleeves are, you know, fairly well beaten up. Um, but the vinyls are, most are, are almost pristine, just a little dusty. Um, some have, I allowed for some minor scratches because I was paying less than a, a buck each. So if you're doing well, it's worth a shot. One band I really like. The Fix, Reach the Beach. I've never heard this album. I think I saw someone um, uh, playing this this album on the uh, the Facebook um, page. Yeah, so there's that. Um, Reach the Beach. This is oh, and you get this problem, you know. <laughs> um, records coming out where they shouldn't be. <laughs> uh, this is from. Darn it. Oh, here we go. 1983. So someone sold their records from 1983. It sounded like this guy um, is basically just just either buying or or just getting free records from people and just, just reselling them. Possibly, I don't know, as a second income or but at a dollar a pop, or even less than a dollar a pop, I, I don't know. <laughs> um, and a lot of a lot of the stuff, you know, was uh, <laughs> so I, I had to do some real digging to f find the good stuff. Now, I have purchased one other album by Lou Rawls. This is Zolin from well, uh, I don't think these older ones really have the date on directly on the on the sleeve. Uh, and I don't see it on there either. But anyway, I had I had finally added uh, Lou Rawls to my collection, and I listened to it, and I really enjoyed it. So I actually picked up a couple. There's this one, Lou Rawls Solon. And this one, it's... The record is really coming out the bottom, but <laughs> look at that, unmistakably you. <laughs> uh, I like his voice, what can I say? I like his voice. Now, uh, I, I, I picked up a lot of like classic like soul and, and R&B, uh, I guess you would say, and that type thing. So, um, let's put that over there. <clears throat> yeah. So along along that line, um, this is my very first Smokey Robinson album, "Warm Thoughts." Now, obviously, it looks like it looks like one of his his um, one of his older. I'm I'm sorry. One of his more recent albums. Um, as, well. It's from 1980, but you know, Smokey Robinson, I, I think he dates back to what, the 60s? I'm probably right. 60s? I think so. Um, yeah, but I'm very excited to add him to my collection. However, <clears throat> once in a while I just have to mention it, as a vegetarian I do not agree with that, his fur coat. <laughs> but, you know, it's all about the music, so, oh well. And again, along that same lines, I believe this is my first Temptations record. But I got so many good records today. Oh, it was totally worth it. This is uh, Wings of Love. And this one has, it looks like it has some, some water damage there. The, the vinyl itself is, is good though, so. Um, uh, let's see, this is from 76, 1976. The Temptations, Wings of Love. <clears throat> <laughs> oh, 
Okay. Um, go ahead and laugh. Go ahead and laugh. <laughs> um, the Time, with their album, Ice Cream Castle. <laughs> and this is from... This is from 1984. Yeah, 1984. Um, now, I don't... Um, okay, okay. Now, I knew them as, you know, Morris Day and The Time. But for some reason, this one is just called The Time. So, and I think that's him right there, um, yeah, 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 that's him. Um, they, they were, I guess unless you're really, really into this type of music, they would be considered a one-hit wonder. Um, I, I can't even remember what the song was, but I, I couldn't pass it up. Look, that's so cool. <laughs> Oh, man. All right. This also is my first Super Tramp album. I picked up a lot of first albums here for me. Um, that's pretty cool. There's a, a tightrope walker there, and someone has scissors about to cut it. He's going to fall into the... It looks like he's going to fall into the sun or something. <laughs> yes, this is... Um, Oh, uh, Famous Last Words. Famous Last Words. Um, from... 1982. Yeah. Now, this is one of those blind purchases. Um, I don't know. I... I know nothing about it, but I was very intrigued by the artwork. Mark Almond. Um, it looks like it's called the Rising. Has a gatefold. <laughs> and this is from 1972, the year of my birth. Mark Almond. I don't know. Has anybody heard of Mark Almond? Let me know, and and maybe uh, I don't know. Is it good? <laughs> the, that, that picture is, is kind of, uh, yeah. <laughs> now this is one of those, one of those curiosities. Um, I've never ever seen a big band with an oriental theme. So this is, um, Long Yellow Road by Toshiko Akiyoshi Lu, Tobacken Big Band. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm intrigued. Very interesting. All right, here we go. <laughs> we got some, uh, Cool in the gang. One thing I'm learning is it's best to take the, you know, like if it's an open uh, shrink wrap, just to take it off. So I'll get around to that. But uh, Cool in the gang in the heart from 1983. <laughs> this one I'm pretty excited about. I, I never imagined, you know, picking up an album by them, but I do like them. Simply Red, Picture Book. And, um, yeah, I mean, less than a buck, you know? Try it out, you know? Uh, this is from 1985. 1985. Right, I'm going to pick up the pace a little bit, because I don't, I don't want to get to the 30-minute mark. We're already at 20 minutes. Great Kin Band, Kinspiracy. <laughs> oh, you gotta love the album artwork. 
1983. Back in the days of cassettes, I was big into Huey, Huey Lewis and the News. So this is for, um, from 1986. I'm, I'm bad with such things, but I, I want to say this is like their second or third album. I, yeah. Anyway. That's pretty cool. This one I was very excited to find because I blindly purchased the, um, number three. And, and, uh, yes, I blindly purchased number three and loved it. I loved it. So I was very, very happy to pick up Gamma 2. <laughs> I gotta love that artwork. And this is from 1980. And I was once told that Gamma is, you know, popular in the VC or, um, well regarded in the VC, so the vinyl community. Gotta love Pat Benatar, man. Pat Benatar. This is uh, Precious Time um, from 1981. 1981. She's just a good rockin' chick. Believe it or not, this is my first Peter Frampton album. A lot of firsts here for me. A lot of firsts. So I'm really fleshing out my collection, if you can say that. <laughs> I just did, I guess. But I, I, it was. I'm so glad I I I, I checked and just decided. Yeah, you know, I'm just gonna go check it out today and. Well, actually, I had been trying to connect with this guy for a few years. A few years. <laughs> no. <laughs> a few days. <laughs> a few days. <laughs> oh, I just I just got back into vinyl this year, so it can't be a few years. Yeah, anyway. <clears throat> this one is my second Motels album. Um... I'm not sure what it's called, but it's from 1979. It might be self-titled, because where the title would be is, is kind of torn, so. Oh yeah, this Peter Frampton is from 1977, the Peter Frampton, 1977. <clears throat> so this one is uh, 1979, Motels. I just love music so much. Um, <laughs> sorry. Uh, this next one, I was told by Sean Benfield um, that it's an amazing album, and it was it was written in a very turbulent time for Jackson Brown. It's called The Pretender. Um, from 1976, there was um, a lot of tragedy that um, occurred, I guess, um, shortly before the recording of this album. Um, and unfortunately, tragedy often brings out the best in artists, so that's, that's the, only, the only good thing to come out of tragedies. Is, you know we can we can turn them into in, into you know a record like this that could be a positive influence on who knows how many people. Um, this is my second Jackson uh, Brown album, um, The Pretender from 1976. Um, yeah, so thank you to Sean Benfield for the the information on this one. I was glad to pick that up. I want to say I, I got it on cassette or something. I don't remember. I don't remember. 
I don't think it's a duplicate. I don't think I already had it on vinyl. I could be wrong, but I'm I'm reaching that point where uh, you know the reality of duplicates is is very real. All right. So we're at 25 minutes. Let's let's get through this before the 30 minute mark. All right. Aretha Franklin, through the storm. Very excited about this one. Um, I I love Aretha Franklin. Yeah, but who doesn't? Who doesn't? Um, this is from. Well, <laughs> it has multiple copyrights on it, but the most recent one is 1989. So let's say it's from 1989. Oh, Brickhouse, I forgot the Commodores did that one. Oh, wow. That's good. <laughs> I'm so glad I picked that record up, man. I totally forgot I had that. But yeah, Aretha Franklin, uh, Through the Storm. Then we have um, Genesis, and then there were three. Obviously, after um, uh, a couple key members left, because I think at their peak they had five members. I'm poorly educated when it comes to Genesis, even though I claim to love them. Um, but we all know um, uh, Peter Gabriel left. He, was the original lead singer, and I, I, I guess this is after Steve Hackett left. I think he was briefly with Genesis. Um, some lyrics in there in the gatefold. So this is, and um, and then there were three from 1978. Some early Genesis. All right. Now this one is a blind purchase, but I'm excited about it. Um, I'll show you why. But this is More Trouble at the V, and I think the name of the band is called The Distraction. Um, that's what it looks like. From TKO Records. And let me tell you why I'm excited about it. Pastel yellow vinyl. Um, I'm slowly, very slowly building up my my colored vinyl collection. So to pick this up for less than a buck, yeah, I was pretty excited. Even though I don't know what it is, but I don't know, it, to me it kind of looks like it might be like punk or something like that. Could be. I could be completely wrong. The, the interesting thing, before we hit the 30 minute mark, um, it's very difficult on colored vinyl to see if there's scratches. <laughs> it's very difficult. That's what I discovered when I was looking at this one. I was like, hmm. This one I'm so pleased. Because I believe this is another first for me and I've tried to get ones by him before and it just hasn't panned out um, Stevie Wonder hotter than July it's the gatefold with the lyrics there's the back the piano on fire wow and I'll remind you I got Pardon me as I pick these up. <laughs> yes, I got all these for 20 bucks. I, I think that was a great deal, um, a really great deal, and I was very pleased. And this one was actually in the box that he was probably intending to charge more. Um, all right, we're almost at 30 minutes, so I'm going to wrap this up. Again, we are listening to the Commodore's self-titled um, 1977 album and I am loving it so I can't wait to actually hear it on vinyl alright just shy of the 30 minute mark thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time